Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. We've just had our broken down truck fixed by the two musicians on the motorcycle, and we're about to join them for their musical performance at the Lower Depths Bar, which is on the main road on the 65, northeast, and I think we take a right around the petting zoo to get there. Now, something I want to mention before I continue, I've actually previously recorded about two hours on from this point here. Um, however, due to a mishap, I lost the two hours of footage. So, it's a bit awkward. I had to restart the entire chapter and just kind of zoom all the way forwards back to this point. And, uh, well, I guess I've lost the element of surprise and discovery for myself, because I already know what's going to happen for the next couple hours. So, it might be a little bit awkward, but I'll try to do my best. Alright, let's continue. So, our truck is fixed up. This gear here is the people in the motorcycle. I forget both of their names. One is Junebug. I forgot the other person's name. Johnny? I think we're almost there. Yeah. There's the petting zoo. Petting zoo is closed. I love the atmosphere of this place. I love just watching the traffic lights swing on that cable. Feels a little like home, huh? It's not all bad memories. Gentler times, in a twisted kind of way. Oh, I forgot to mention that back there on the road, you may have noticed that there was a frequency dial at the top of the screen. That's new, I think because Shannon just fixed up the radio when we were stuck by the side of the road. So yeah, now we can listen to the radio. Um, mostly just weird, staticky, kind of indiscernible things. But uh, you'll be seeing more about the radio pretty soon. Hard times served. What, like prison sentences? Oh yeah, you can look at the dumpster, right? Yeah. If I remember right, there's some odd stuff in here. Trash bin is filled, several pairs of working shoes, a few hats, and a small Ziploc bag with three pairs of eyeglasses. Kinda late. Are you sure they're open? Sure they're open. This is one of those places. Let's head on in. We are not saints, but we've kept our appointment. How many people can boast as much? That's lovely, ma'am. Who said it? A poet. <laughs> oh yeah, so it is Johnny. Johnny and Junebug. J and J. Ma'am, I hate to say it, but the cupboard is bare. Have some vision, Cricket. We've got one, two, four patrons. Harry doesn't count. Well, we've done more with less. Do you play here often? We have a regular thing here. Harry likes to just book it all up and forget about it. He's not really a music lover, I wouldn't say. But I guess his wife was. She had the stage put in, I know that. So he keeps it going. In her memory, or out of habit. A rough brick between two pieces of stale bread sits in the center of the table, surrounded by a ring of undisturbed dust. Yeah, unless this is like this thing I'm looking at here, unless that's a napkin dispenser of some sort, it literally looks like a brick. A 
Also, there's a pair of eyeglasses on the table. I wonder if that's related to the eyeglasses thrown out in the dumpster. A bulky set of black goggles set on the edge of the table. Next to an ashtray, a newspaper, and a few empty glasses. Huh. Who do you think that belongs to? Whoever they are, they're gone now. Must have been pretty tanked to leave it behind. This thing looks expensive. Ezra flips eagerly through the jukebox's catalog of songs. What do you think? I don't know how to play this game. All I'm pouring tonight is Hard Times Whiskey. Got any coffee going? No coffee. Hard Times Whiskey. Yelling towards the exit. Say, shut the GD door, would you? I can't afford to run the AC all night. Sorry, Harry. Oh, it's you two. Where have you been? Never mind, listen. I can't keep this place open through the small hours of the night just waiting for musicians. Where is everyone? Everybody had to... Uh... Clear out. Let's get set up, huh? There's nobody here to listen to it. I can't pay for... We brought some people, Harry. A crowd is forming. Yeah, but also I... Don't you want to hear some music, Harry? That does sound nice after the day I've had. But I... <laughs> okay, this moment, I'm just going to tell you I absolutely love... They're going to perform a song, and you actually get to choose some of the lyrics. How's it looking out there? How are y'all feeling tonight? To Harry. Can we get a bit more reverb in the monitors? Harry adjusts his soundboard behind the bar. How's that? Test, test. One, one, one. Three, fifty. Lamentation. Lamentation. Sounds good. How's everybody doing? Anybody had a real bad night? To Conway. How about you, old man? Yeah, real bad. We'll try not to make it too much worse. This is a song I heard in a tavern many years ago at an open mic night. Me and Johnny were out just riding around, you know. You like to drive around, old man? That's where I feel at home. Of course you do. So we were out riding around and we passed this gaudy old tavern. I mean, it was a real dive. Busted up the sod, weeds in the parking lot, taps all dry, bats in the bar room, and run by this creaky bag of bones. Looked like the only thing keeping him awake was the fear of death. So glad to be back here at the lower depths. Hey now. So we stopped for an early drink and there was a lady singing right here on stage. And the song she sang, well, it stuck with us. And now it's a regular part of our repertoire. Never got that lady's name, but she seemed like a sweet gal and she had a voice like scotch whiskey. And we just hope we do her song justice. So here it is. Too late to love you.
Watching that performance gives me this really strange feeling. It very much reminds me of the feeling I get when I watch the songs in Twin Peaks The Return, aka Twin Peaks Season 3. I think it's the combination of the sort of surrealist and hard to understand world combined with dreamy music. Something about that just gives me such a powerful and odd feeling. I, I think this is probably my favorite moment in the whole of Kentucky Route Zero so far. It's so beautiful. Well, hope you liked it. Kind of sad, isn't it? Kind of. Listen, we appreciate you folks sticking around for the show. There's nothing more wretched than playing sad songs to an empty room. We've just got to get our fee from Harry, and then we'll get you headed to the, uh, zero. Well, Harry, I think that went pretty well. I'd say the crowd was into it. Reverential. Wrapped. I guess the usual fee's about right, and we'll let you get back to your business. Well, that's just the... Damn it. I was trying to tell you to. I can't pay. They cleaned me out. I've got nothing left but a GDIOU from the distillery. An IOU. Yeah, I traded them some... I traded them for some whiskey, and I guess I had some surplus credit. So I got this note to get some more from them later on. Must have been a hell of a trade. I had to. Gotta keep this place open somehow, goddammit. Watch your language, Harry. <laughs> it's the first time Harry's not said GD instead of goddamn. Could you pay them with your IOU? Well, I... Very contemporary. Very astute. How about it, Harry? Let's push some paper around. Well, it's just... I can collect it, uh, collect on it here when they bring more whiskey up, but for you to cash in, you'd have to go down to, you know, down to the distillery, down to hard times, and you know, it's, you've got to take the zero. So that's what we'll do. How do we get there? Are you folks sure you want to head down there? I've never been myself, but I hear people hear things, rumors. So where we've got to go? Well, I'll tell you then, to Junebug. But this is it, right? We're square? Harry, you're alright. If only. You got a radio in your car? Yep. Well, here's what you've got to do. Take a left out of the parking lot and then just fiddle around on your dial until you hear something familiar, but... I mean... Familiar, but strange. You know the feeling? Like, I used to go hunt with my uncle out in the mountains, and now I watch these nature programs. They're filmed in the mountains, and there's the deer, and I know all the plants and every kind of tree, but something just doesn't look right. And it's even stranger for being so close to familiar. Something like that. You'll know it when you hear it. Fix that strange but familiar station on your dial. Drive for a bit. And then turn around when the station cuts out. I mean, right then. Hope you folks find what you're looking for. Eventually. Always a pleasure, Harry. Is it? Alright, so here's where the radio comes in. So let's go back out to the main road. Listen for something familiar, but strange. This station doesn't quite match that bartender's description. Definitely weird, though. Let's keep, let's keep scanning. He said we'd know it when we heard it. What's this station? I've never heard this before. Sounds like... horses. Horses running. A race? 
Charlie and I used to go to the races sometimes. Charlie. He was your boss's kid, right? The one who, uh... Yeah, must be some memories there. Well, that fits familiar but strange for me. Harry said we just drive and tell it cuts out. zero. So last time in the in the failed recording to get where I wanted to go I went down this way. I'm gonna try going the other way and just see if anything different happens. Let's go up instead. It may all loop around to the same spot, would not surprise me. In fact I think it's downright likely. Yep, same spot. One big loop. Hall of the Mountain King. The bridge ends abruptly, crumbling in disrepair. They don't keep the roads up too well, do they? Not down here. Who do you think is responsible? Yeah, who maintains the roads in the Zero? If anybody. Time to cut them loose, ma'am? Well, now I'm having fun. <laughs> okay. Slow night anyway. It's cool, it's like we're just gathering more and more companions along the way. And it feels like they're just going to keep following us forever. Got Shannon. Got Ezra. Got, uh, what is the name of Ezra's friend? The huge eagle? What is it? Um, Johnny? Or something like that? No, wait, you're Johnny. Pretty sure that's Johnny. Julian? Julian is the name of the eagle. And now we got Johnny and Junebug. Just more and more people. Alright, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Because I know the whole segment once we head up to the boardwalk is going to be very interesting and quite long. I can't wait to show you what's going on up there. Again, sorry that the recording messed up and that this is a little bit awkward because I'm not seeing this for the first time unlike everything before, but we'll get through it. Probably one or two more episodes and we'll be back to completely new stuff for me. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go up to the boardwalk.